Hello and welcome. This is Business Incorporated live from Lagos. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. On the show today, World Bank cuts Uganda's GDP forecast, citing South Sudan. Transparency International says Zimbabwe loses at least $1 billion annually to corruption, with police and local government officials among the worst offenders. Plus, South Africa's net reserves rise to $41.953 billion in September. We'll begin with the World Bank IMF meeting ongoing in Washington, D.C. World finance leaders have decried a growing populist backlash against globalization and pledged to take steps to ensure trade and economic integration benefited more people currently left behind. Their comments at the start of the International Monetary Fund and World Bank fall meeting signaled frustration with persistently low growth rates and the surge of public anger over free trade and other pillars of the global economic stem. The meetings are the first since Britain voted into June uh, to leave the European Union and U.S. billionaire Donald Trump secured the Republican presidential nomination with a campaign that attacked trade deals. Meanwhile, International Monetary Fund officials sought to play down the risk of an imminent crisis over Deutsche Bank and expressed confidence that German and European authorities were working to ensure stability. Now, questions over the health of Germany's largest lender loomed large over the start of the IMF and World Bank annual meetings in Washington, dominating the news conference on risks to global financial stability. Banks, we, we can break it down into, into ultimately into three groups. Uh, banks with legacy challenges owing to high non-performing loans. Banks that have been restructured, taken over by the government in the, and um, recapitalized, but they're still struggling to uh, find their footing. And third, investment banks that are in transition away from dated business models that relied heavily on large-scale uh, balance sheets. And Deutsche Bank, we can say, is in the midst of this, of this latest challenge. So it's among uh, sets of groups. It's in that, it's in that third, third bucket of banks that need to continue to adjust to, have, to convince investors that its business model uh, is, is viable going forward, that it's addressed uh, the issues of operational risk uh, arising from uh, litigation and so on, and I think that's that's the new environment that uh, that we're in, and uh, I think I'm sure that um, uh, that uh, th those challenges will be met. And for global markets in Asia, markets tumbled on Friday with sentiment weighed by the British pound's sharp drop in early trade, while traders likely took to the sidelines ahead of the key U.S. September jobs report. In Australia, the ASX 200 closed down 0.29%. Japan's Nikkei 225 finished down 39.01 points. Across the Korean Strait, the Kospi closed lower by 11.50 points. In Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index fell 0.42%. Markets in China remained closed for the Golden Week public holidays. And investors in Europe remain cautious ahead of the closely watched U.S. jobs report and um, after a dramatic plunge in sterling in early Asian trade. Uh, let's cross over now to Frankfurt. DWTV Channel TV financial correspondent Orich Bartz joins me now. Good afternoon, Orich. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, Orich, just wondering if the job data is out now, what is it like and how is the market reacting to it? Yeah, mild reaction uh, so far. Uh, the job data is, uh, yeah, disappointing, if you will. Uh, the U.S. Uh, labor market added uh, 156,000 uh, new jobs uh, in non-farm payrolls, and that's less than expected. Economists had uh, forecast that uh, the September number would reach 175,000. Uh, there's other news as well. For August, uh, the number uh, for new jobs was revised upwards. But still, it's not the kind of news that the market expected. If I look at the DAX, 
uh, the DAX is uh, going clearly up. Um, the change is, is not very great, but the trend is favorable. Why? Uh, because uh, with this, yeah, less than, less than stellar number from the U.S. labor market, it seems less likely that the uh, Fed will raise rates uh, for a second time uh, since last December, December 2015. Um, if the numbers had been stronger, I think the speculation would have been that it's a clearer signal for the Fed uh, that the economy can take another rate hike, uh, perhaps in December. Uh, the Federal Open Market Committee meets also in November, um, and surely there's, there's more uh, data coming. Uh, a month from now, there, there's going to be another labor market report, but the initial reaction here is, yeah, disappointing news for the economy, but perhaps good news for the market, which always welcomes when, when central bank rates uh, are less likely to rise. Now, aside from the job data, sterling is also in focus for investors after the currency nosedived in Asian trade in what has been described as flash crash. How is it playing out in the market where you are standing? Yeah, it's uh, not having a, a great uh, current topical effect here on, on the market uh, in Germany. Uh, the Brexit and the state of the pound in general are, of course, uh, a, a very big uh, topic for people to uh, for people to uh, have. And uh, but but it's uh, it had a greater effect in Britain, where mining stocks were down. Oh, we're up on the news because, of course, when the pound is is going down, then uh, it makes. Uh, uh, products from the mining companies listed in the London Exchange a little bit more affordable for the customers. Uh, people here also puzzling, how could sh such a flash crash uh, come about? Uh, nobody really knows. Could be an algorithm trading problem, perhaps, uh, or a fat finger, someone actually uh, typing in wrong numbers or wrong volumes. Um, but certainly it is an event that is very, very unusual. Now, Frankfurt saw a huge IPO today, the biggest one since the year 2000. Uh, the firm is called Inogy, if I'm correct. Uh, tell us more about this firm and how the IPO went today. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I would pronounce it energy, but uh, we're talking about the same same event and the same company, uh, Jimmy. It's uh, a spin-off from RWE. That's one of the big utilities here in Germany. The other one, Eon, also spun off activities in a different way that was less successful. And this was, uh, as everyone who uh, I talked to today, uh, a hugely success, a successful one. It generated 5 billion euros for energy and for um, the company that spun it off, RWE. Uh, the utility sector here in Germany uh, under huge pressure after uh, the change in energy policy nationally following uh, the disaster at Fukushima. And um, this brings much needed cash into the RWE group. Energy itself is concentrating on renewables. That's attractive to investors. And it's also uh, concentrating on the distribution of power through, through networks. And that also offers, for the moment at least, stable profits uh, and stable turnover and a healthy dividend. So investor interest was very high uh, in the forefront. The subscription was at the top level of the range, and the share also went up uh, on, uh, on the first trading day now. Right. Energy. I will, of course, stick to your own pronunciation there, Rich. Thank you very much for your time, and do enjoy your weekend. <laughs>